This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Hello there and welcome to a very special Squiz Kids Q&A, part of our ongoing series of interviews with people in the news where you, the kids of Australia, get to ask the questions. I'm Amanda Bauer. Today we're delighted to welcome to the Squiz Kids hot seat someone who will play a part in the lives of one million Australian school children for the next 10 days, but whose name most of you have probably not heard before, Peter Titmanis. Peter is a former teacher who now works for the Australian Curriculum Assessment and Reporting Authority, also known as ACARA. ACARA does a lot of things, including developing the NAPLAN test, and Peter is one of the people in charge of NAPLAN. NAPLAN's given to students in grades 3, 5, 7 and 9 every year, and testing is officially allowed to start tomorrow. That's one million Aussie school kids who will be sitting four tests each over the next 10 days. One in maths, one in reading, one in writing, and one in language conventions. That's stuff like spelling, grammar, punctuation. Now, just hearing the words test and NAPLAN might make your heart race a little bit, but Peter is here to help you feel a bit more comfortable. And of course, to answer all of your burning NAPLAN questions. After all, it only seems fair that the kids of Australia should get to throw a few curly ones at Peter when they're going to have to answer his questions on the test. Peter, welcome to Squiz Kids. Hi, um, nice to be here. We're really excited to have you on Squiz Kids. Is everything ready for the NAPLAN testing window to open tomorrow? Uh, It is. We've been doing a lot of work to make sure that uh, everyone's prepared, teachers are prepared, we're prepared. So yeah, we're good to go. Fantastic. Now, I'm sure you won't be surprised to hear that we got quite a lot of questions from Squiz Kids about NAPLAN. Are you ready to jump right in? Let's go. So to kick things off, we have a student who would like to know more about your personal experience of testing. Let's hear it, Tamara. Hi, Peter. My name is Tamara. I'm 10 years old and I'm from Woodhill State School. My question is, did you have NAPLAN when you were at school? No, we didn't have NAPLAN or television or mobile phones or anything else like that. Uh, But we did have dinosaurs (laughs) and they were really fun. (laughs) I don't believe you. (laughs) Uh, That's true. That's true. So did you have lots of tests when you were in school? Yes, we uh, had heaps of tests. I remember um, every uh, couple of months uh, our teachers used to crank up a test and it seemed to be what school was about. And I think there are probably kids who would say that that's still what it feels like for them, which leads nicely into a question that we got a lot from many different Squiz Kids and we've chosen Lucia to represent them all. Take it away, Lucia. Hi, Pia. My name is Lucia and I am 10 years old and I'm from Mapleton. My question is, why do we have to do NAPLAN? NAPLAN is a really handy tool. I think the best way to think about it is um, like when you go to a doctor. Um, A doctor uses a stethoscope or a thermometer to check how healthy you are. In this case, we've got governments and people like me who use the NAPLAN results to check how kids at schools are going. It helps us to work out whether some schools might need some extra assistance. Um, But it also helps us to work out things that are going really well, and which is just as important. Sometimes teachers from schools that are doing really well, we were asking them to share the information that helps other schools who might need a bit of support. So it sounds like it's sort of a test of the school more than it is of the individual kids. You just need the kids to sit the test in order for you to find out how the school is doing. Yeah, that's that's a really good way of thinking about it. Um, It's really important for a number of different reasons. And um, your teacher's got a lot of information about how you're going in the classroom anyway. So this is just a little bit of extra information for the teacher, but more importantly, it's information for governments and people like me. So what's an example of how uh, you've used or a government has used NAPLAN results to make things better for kids? Probably the one that's most important is um, where we provide some extra assistance, and that can be through um, usually extra funding that schools um, receive, so they can employ some specialists or do some additional programs. Um, We've also done a lot of work with Aboriginal students to make sure that um, they're ready for schools. So basically, if things don't go quite as well as you might have hoped in a test, then your school or your community might get some money and some help so that they can help you. That sounds that sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah, 
Yeah. Now, um, four tests and one million students and four different grade levels, making that all happen sounds like quite a lot of work. Amelia has a question for you about your job. Hi, Peter. My name is Amelia. I am 10 years old and I'm from Backham. My question is, how is it all put together and who comes up with the questions? Well, we have some very clever people involved in the process. Um, another thing it is, um, these things take a long time to get ready, usually about two years, and it involves experts from all across the country. We sometimes hire specialist writers to develop the questions and have a whole team of people sitting in offices in Sydney uh, and in Perth usually who uh, check the questions to make sure they're the right ones uh, for you as students. And the good news is that we end up spending a lot of time uh, making sure that we're asking the right questions so you don't have to worry about the test. Um, and, and from my point of view, and I think uh, it's important for you, that to think of NAPLAN as a test of what you've already learnt in the class. You've already done the hard work, um, and so uh, we just need you to try your best. So you shouldn't be studying for NAPLAN, hitting the books? No, no. Uh, I think you've done everything you possibly can already. Um, So you should just be um, turning up to class and doing whatever you do uh, every other day of the year, especially on the days when your teacher might even be sitting your own test. It's no different. Now, Lucy has a question that uh, some other people had as well, and I think probably quite a lot of kids might want to hear your answer to this one. Let's hear it, Lucy. Hi, Peter. My name is Lucy. I am 10 years old and from Blackman's Bay, Tasmania. My question is, what advice would you give to someone who is nervous about NAPLAN? Yeah, just as I said a moment ago, um, I'd remind them that tests are just another part of your school life Um, and that the thing that uh, your parents, your teachers and your school would expect of you is just to do your best on the day. And you might get nervous uh, in the same way that you might get nervous for other sporting events, you know, that are really important or a musical performance that you might be doing. So it's natural to be a little bit nervous. Um, But there's no need to do any extra study or anything like that. Um, The best preparation is to do what you're already doing. Come to school and listen in class. Follow what your teacher asks you to do. Now, Class 5B at Launton State School in Queensland sent through some cracker questions, including this one. Let's hear it, Team Launton. Hi, Peter. My name is Alana. I'm 10 years old and I'm from Launton State School. My question is, why is NAPLAN only about... English and maths, not other subjects such as PE. Well, NAPLAN focuses on literacy and numeracy. Uh, that means uh, English and mathematics. And the reason we do that is because these are the most important things you can learn at school. They're the building blocks for all the learning that you do, even PE. For example, um, the numeracy skills that you learn um, probably help you do the scoring uh, if you're actually watching a game or checking out the player's statistics or team ranking. So all of that involves using a bit of numeracy. Uh, Similarly, when you're doing mathematics, you actually need to know how to read. So the things such as writing, spelling, grammar, numeracy, which are the parts of the uh, NAPLAN test, are all things that you need to have to be able to progress through schools. I guess the other thing is that you'd spend an awful lot of time doing NAPLAN tests if you had them in every subject, right? (laughs) There'd be a lot of testing over and above what your school provides. Now, uh, Benji from New South Wales has a really serious question for you, Peter. Benji? Hi, Peter. My name is Benji. I am eight years old and I'm from Bondi Junction, New South Wales. My question is... Why does NAPLAN still use colours in their questions? I am colour blind and can't answer the questions which involve choosing the right colour. Why not use letters like A, B or C to select the correct answer? Well, that's something we're really passionate about um, as people who develop the NAPLAN tests because we want to make sure that students aren't disadvantaged and as many students uh, with special needs can do the test as possible. So. We, we provide a lot of um, support for students uh, in different ways. For example, we have different colour themes. So if you've got particular colour blindness, you can, uh, or your teacher will select different uh, themes. If you've got um, trouble using the mouse uh, or iPad, for instance, then we have ways you can use the keyboard to move around the questions on and answer the questions on the screen. Um, there's also things like extra time, rest breaks, 
And we also have printed um, booklets with large print. Um, we have booklets that are in Braille. And we also, uh, the important the interesting part about this is we have new technology emerging all the time. That t- technology helps us with things like being able to uh, press a button on our screen and have the question read out to you. That's not for all the questions in the test, but for some questions we've got that sort of assistance. So we're always on the lookout for new technology and how it might help kids with special needs actually take part in the test. Now, uh, one of my friends from Victoria, Shahan, has a really great suggestion on how to make NAPLAN more fun. Speaking of technology, do you want to hear it? (laughs) Yes. Hi, Peter. My name is Lushi. My friend Shahan is sick sick at the moment, so I'll be asking his question. Why can't NAPLAN be played as a video game like Reading Eggs? Well, that's a great question. It's always fun to um, have activities like reading eggs that make learning fun and I'm sure your teacher has lots of different ways to make learning fun. The The truth is um, there are some things in life that just aren't fun and I guess NAPLAN falls into that category and some of those things are really important um, and I guess NAPLAN falls into that uh, category, um, not just important for individuals but sometimes they're important for all of us to do. Um, so we can help others who might be uh, in need of that support uh, or where we can target extra money to help teachers and, and schools. Now, uh, we have a Year 3 student at Albany Primary School in WA who is really cutting to the chase with his question. Robbie, let's hear it. Hey, Peter. My name is Robbie. I am eight years old and I'm from Albany. My question is, can you tell me all the answers? Sure, Robbie. I'll have my people call your people. <laughs> No, Robbie, sorry. (laughs) I'm really sorry. I can't tell you. Um, But you probably don't need the answers. You've probably got them in your head. You just don't realise just yet. Uh, They'll come out as you start doing the test. I reckon all these brilliant young people will do their best the same way they do every day and it will be no big deal. I'm sure that's the case. It's just another day at school and if they think about it that way, they'll be fine. Now, sadly, that's all we have time for today. An enormous thanks to all of you Squiz Kids who sent in questions for Peter. As per usual, we had more questions sent in than we had time to ask. Each one was fantastic, but time was against us. Peter, thank you so much for taking the time to chat to us today. That was great. I really enjoyed it and uh, loved the questions. Now, uh, as you may know, Peter, we award a prize for the best question. You get to be the judge. What... uh, what tickled your funny bone or what did you think was the wisest question that you were asked all day today? Well, I'd have to give it to Robbie for his question about um, give me the answers. It was quite a cheeky little question. So, Robbie, good on you. <laughs> good on you, Robbie. And remember, folks, the Squeeze Kids podcast, your daily fix of kid-appropriate news, is out at 7 a.m. every day via the Squiz Kids website or wherever you find your podcasts. This is Amanda signing off. And, Peter, would you please do the honours now. Get out there and have an excellent day. Over and out. Squeeze Kids is proudly supported by the Judith Nielsen Institute for Journalism and Ideas. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh.
over and out.